Okay, here I'm going to do a quick proof of Snell's Law, and all you really need to, to know to understand this proof would be Calculus 1. So, a ray of light travels from a point A to a point B in minimal time. The point A is in one medium, such as air or a vacuum, and the point B is in another medium, such as water or glass. In the first medium, the light travels at a velocity of V sub 1, and in the second medium, at a velocity V sub 2 and the media are separated by some line L. We're going to show that for the path A, P, B of minimal time, that sine of alpha over V sub 1 equals sine of beta over V sub 2. And again, this is known as Snell's Law. So kind of the, the basic idea. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem and some basic tri trigonometry to produce some useful expressions that we'll come back to. We're going to use the fact that distance equals rate times time, or equivalently, the distance divided by the rate equals time, and that's going to give us an equation involving time. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the, make the equation depend only on a single variable. And the variable that I'm going to use will be a, this, this horizontal distance from the point A to the point P. And you'll see that in just a second. So we'll do that. That'll give us an, an equation and a single variable. And then it's just a, a, a amounts to doing the calculus. Take a derivative, set it equal to zero. I'm not going to actually justify that it's a minimum. I'll let you all do that. And uh, basically we'll get that sine of alpha over V sub 1 equals sine of beta over V sub 2. So that's the idea. Okay, so here's the same picture we had just a second ago. The only thing that I've done is I've introduced a new constant, C, and that's going to be the horizontal distance from the point A to the point B. So again, um, this is a constant, right? It's a fixed length. Okay, so I'm going to introduce my variable. So I'm going to let the variable x, that's going to be the horizontal distance from the point A to P. And then uh, from the point P to B, well, since the entire length is C, that horizontal distance would be C minus X. Okay, so if we use uh, some our, our Pythagorean theorem, you know, if we look at the, 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 the upper triangle, we would have A squared plus X squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So a squared plus x squared equals the hypotenuse squared, or equivalently, the hypotenuse is just going to be the square root of a squared plus x squared. So I'm going to label that distance. And likewise, we can do that for the bottom triangle as well. We would have that b squared plus the quantity c minus x squared would be the other hypotenuse squared. So we would get the other length to be the square root of b squared plus c minus x squared. And again, I'm, I'm thinking about the distance over the rate to help us find the time. So that's why I'm finding the lengths of the hypotenuse, right? We've got the distance along one hypotenuse and the distance along the other hypotenuse. So those are going to be important expressions here. And if we use trigonometry, sine of alpha, right, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So for the angle alpha, we would get sine of alpha is x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. And likewise, we would get that the sine of the angle beta, that's going to be the quantity c minus x over the square root of b squared plus c minus x squared. Okay, so I really haven't done much of anything yet other than use Pythagorean theorem and just use some basic trigonometry here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to think about an equation that represents time. So we would sort of have the, you know, the, the um, so we know that the time, so we said that uh, distance equals r times t. So time is going to be the distance over the rate. 
So the time total, and I'm just going to abbreviate that as t in a second, that's going to be the time spent along you know, the upper portion plus the time spent traveling along the you know, bottom portion, below the line L, is how I thought about it. So again, to get the time on the upper portion, we would take the distance it travels, which is the square root of a squared plus x squared. So the rate, we said, in the upper portion, it had a velocity of v sub 1. And the time spent along the bottom portion, again, that's going to be the other distance, which we found using Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be the square root of b squared plus c minus x squared, all over v sub 2. And that's going to be our time t. All right, so we've now got an expression that tells us time, all in terms of the variable x. So you can imagine, you know, as x changes here, this distance, you know, where the light would hit, it's going to give you uh, different, different times traveled. But again, the only variable that we have in our equation here is x. a is a constant, v sub 1 is a constant, b is a constant, c is a constant, and v sub 2 is also a constant. So now all we have to do is step 3, which is to take a derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. And then we'll set that equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to do one more step here. I'm going to rewrite our equation. So t is going to be the, we've got a squared plus x squared. I'm going to write this to the 1 half power. We'll have to use the chain rule over v sub 1. Plus, and then the same thing, we've got b squared plus c minus x squared. All of that raised to the 1 half power over v sub 2. And now I'm just going to start taking a derivative here. So it says the derivative of our equation here with respect to x, well, again, v1 is a constant. We, ha we don't have to think about the, uh, you know, the quotient rule or anything there. That's just going to come along. So if we take the derivative, we'll have 1 half of a squared plus x squared. We'll subtract 1 to give us negative 1 half. We have to take the derivative of the inside part. Again, a squared is just a constant, so the derivative of that portion will be 0. And the derivative of x squared, well, we'll just get 2x. And again, v1 is just kind of hanging out there. Take the derivative of the other part. We have 1 half. We'll leave the inside alone. Raised to the negative 1 half power. And then when we take the derivative of the inside portion, again, the derivative of b squared will be 0 since it's a constant. So we'll have to use the chain rule again on the quantity c minus x squared. So we would have 2 times, well, we'll leave the inside alone, subtract 1 from the exponent. Then we would have to use the chain rule one more time. The derivative of the inside part, c minus x, again, c is a constant, so the derivative of negative x would just be negative 1. And again, that's all over v sub 2. Almost looks like a square root of 2. Sorry about that. So I always put little, little wings on my v's there. So again, v sub 1 and v sub 2, not square root of 1 and square root of 2. And now it's just a matter of setting this equal to 0 and simplifying. Okay, so we're going to take our derivative, set it equal to 0. Well, 1 half times 2 will just be 1. We can leave the x in the numerator. The a squared plus x squared raised to the negative 1 half, we can put that back in the denominator um, as a squared plus x squared raised to the positive 1 half. And again, it's still being multiplied by v sub 1. Plus, well, let's see, we've got 1 half times 2. That will, again, give us 1. We'll be left with negative 1 times c minus x. Same thing with the other quantity, b squared plus c minus x squared to the negative 1 half. We can put that in the denominator as b squared plus c minus x squared all raised to the positive 1 half power. And again, that's still being multiplied by v sub 2. 
Now, of course, I could have, uh, instead of leaving my negative 1 in the numerator, I could have pulled that out front and just changed that into a, a minus sign. And I think that's what I'm going to do here. So we've got 0 equals, let me write it one more time, x over v sub 1 times a squared plus x squared to the 1 half minus c minus x over, we've got v sub 2 times b squared plus c minus x squared all raised to the 1 half power. Well, we can add the, uh, you know, the minus c minus x over v sub 2, all of that stuff to both sides. So if we add that term over to the left side, if we add that over to the left side, we'll have that c minus x over v sub 2. And I'm going to rewrite this now as the square root of v squared plus c minus x squared. So instead of writing it to the 1 half power, just using the square root, equals, well, we would leave the, uh, the original term over there involving x. So we would have x over v sub 1 multiplied by the square root of a squared plus x squared. Again, you could justify that this is, in fact, a minimum. But if we go back to our original expressions here, Notice we have, we said that sine, sine of alpha was equal to x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. Well, hey, we've got x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. So this portion is going to be equal to sine of alpha. And likewise, we've got c minus x over the square root of b squared plus c minus x squared. So all of this is going to be equal to sine of beta. So now what we have left over, we have that sine of beta over v sub 2 equals sine of alpha over v sub 1. And hey, that is in fact what we wanted to show.